Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Slash Film Daily. Uh, as you might know, I am out of the office. I'm on a trip in New York City. And uh, so we're bringing you a special uh, interview that I conducted on the set of Avengers Infinity War. Uh, this was a sit-down discussion with writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, who you might know as the screenwriters who did all of the Captain America series, as well as Thor, the Dark World, uh, they wrote Avengers Infinity War as as well as the Avengers 4 follow up that is still yet to be titled um, in this sit down discussion, which was recorded in June of 2017 uh, before this podcast even began. So the audio is a little rougher than normal, but I'm sure it's it's fine to listen to. I've I've done some audio uh, noise reduction. Uh, hopefully, it is good for you guys. Uh, but uh, in this interview, uh, they don't really get into spoilers. You know, Marvel is very uh, guarded uh, with spoilers and holding things close to their vest. Uh, all the people on these set visits are told not to uh, spoil anything. So I would say if if you've watched the trailers for. Uh, the Infinity War uh, trailers, I would say, you know, feel free to listen to this podcast. If you're trying to avoid everything, then maybe, you know, don't listen to this interview. But I don't think they really reveal much. They they kind of talk about their approach uh, with this film, how this is Thanos' story, um, you know, how this is going to connect with Avengers 4, integrating elements like Captain Marvel, um if she's in it or if she isn't, uh, which sounds like she isn't, um, you know, how to balance an ensemble storytelling effort like this. Uh, you know, they, they took some cues from Game of Thrones. Uh, it's an interesting interview, and I hope you enjoy our interview with Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely from the set of Avengers Infinity War. Hi, everybody. Many of them I recognize from other things like this. Hey, <laughs> Do we look older, tireder, balder? Yeah. I didn't have we glasses didn't last time. <laughs> <laughs> no. can, can you guys both say your names? Yeah, this, this is Steve McFeely over here. And I am Chris Marcus. You guys, we just got here. Yeah. All right, welcome. We saw them shoot that, but like, tell us what this effort is about. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, you know I think more, more accurately, what isn't it about? Okay. Uh, it's not about... Uh, it's this is about the culmination of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is about everyone getting together or trying their hardest to get together to fight a guy named Thanos. Uh, who hopefully uh, will come together in a way that will be satisfying. Uh, you know, we've been teasing Thanos for many movies and 30 second clips. Uh, so hopefully all that lead up will allow us to, to really go to town with him and make him uh, uh, a villain that requires this epic level of storytelling. That is, that's the word I would use most often. It's ridiculously big. How, how long does it take for Thanos to take the screen? Like how long, how much movies? You, you, uh, it, it'll take 18 movies. <laughs> uh, no, I mean you won't. It's, it's yeah, Thanos. We won't is, tell you exactly, but yeah. you are going to get Thanos, yeah. and you are you are not going to feel like we continued to jerk you around and kept him in check. That's right. In many ways, it's Thanos' movie. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about obviously this is one that's bringing a ton of people together. But yeah. are there any character pairings that you think people will be very surprised to see? Uh, I don't know about surprised because it's very hard to surprise. <laughs> People. That's not true at all. I think we will surprise the hell okay, out of people. Okay, we'll surprise people. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if we can tell you what the pairings are, but yeah, one of the goals, uh, after Civil War, uh, we got in a room for about four or five months trying to crack this, these two ridiculously big things. Uh, a and, wall of characters. Right. And at a certain point, you just go... That's right. <laughs> that's funny. Yes. That's funny. 100%. What's a story that could get those two together? Right. Um... We talked a lot about, uh, as a Joe Russo term, strange alchemy, right? What is it when you put the two characters together, uh, even in a fairly normal, traditional situation, but because we've invested in those characters mm -hmm. and know them, we sort of delight at the idea of those two people rubbing against each other. So that's, uh, that, there's a lot of, we always chase delight. Yeah. And, and terror. Well, lots of terror. Yeah. yeah. And there's lots of, you know, there's also, you know, we're coming off of Civil War, we're coming off of, of Winter Soldier. So that there's lots of backstory that still needs to play out 
in addition to the Thanos situation, like I, I just walked by Sebastian Stan out there, like you could put Bucky in a room with anybody and they're going to go, oh shit, it's just <laughs> the maniac. That's right. We have unfinished you know, business. Um, he's shot Natasha twice as far as I can <laughs> keep count, so it's going to be, it's interesting. What about bringing in the cosmic universe? That seems to be something we're all very, very curious about, how the mm. Guardians coming in. Yeah, that's part of the strange alchemy, is right, is, uh, and one of the reasons that that first Avengers movie was so popular and so exciting is you were taking three, you know, about four franchises and smashed them into each other. Uh, uh, and that, that hopefully we have the same kind of magic here where we get to bring this completely different set of characters uh, uh, and smash them into varying groups of our characters, right? That's a, another thing to think about it. One of the challenges we've had is how do you make sure that this is not 25 people moving from one scene to one scene to one scene? So, you know, we talk... It's a, you know, we're a little facetious about it, but we talk about how it's like Nashville, right? So you've got four or five different stories that weave together and then come together and then break apart. So you get all these different pairings and groupings of four and five and six. Yeah. And in that way, not unlike something like Game of Thrones, where you have this vast uh, canvas with characters who you've been watching, you know, this guy over here in the West and this girl over here in the East for years and only now do the, you know it has that feeling of massive plates shifting and right. finally bringing these characters near each other so are you saying that this movie is going to be on a par with Daenerys finally meeting Jon Snow <laughs> oh actually yeah. it's gonna it I is am gonna, absolutely it telling is gonna you blow that. that away yes <laughs> <laughs> well, this what we just watched was them coming to describe to us as them coming to Wakanda to kind of warn them that something happened mm. it looks like they may have taken some sort of beating before this, at least. Uh, but I mean, it, it's early in the film. What can you say about how it starts? Because as it, as it stands now, a lot of the characters in the MCU are scattered. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's where does this kind of pick up? That is something we didn't want to blow off. You know, we didn't want to devalue Civil War by you know, in the first thing, having a phone call saying, "Let's all get back together because there's even more sky." And no, nah, everything's fine now. So we we drag that a long way through it so that. You know, we are valuing the resentments we built up between these characters. They're um, prepared to handle this. Yeah. And it shows. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, this is Thanos' film, but I know that Mbaku has also been oh. added to the cast as a villain. Mm -hmm. It's Mbaku and Thanos, that's it. It's the film's not But no, there's a substantial, there's a substantial kind of portion. Yeah. Is there any other villains that we expect to see? Uh, well, man just killed something over there. Uh, 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 yeah. But these are our main villains at this point. No, sorry, I, 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 I don't even confirm villainous. I would not confirm Mbaku's villainous for our purposes. Okay. Um, you know, and villain is a. It's a derogatory people. term that Thanos wouldn't agree with. I mean, one of the things we set out to do in this in this was. If Thanos is just a bad guy, is going, you know, yeah. you're dead in the water because it's that's just a bad guy. You're just, you know, you're bored pretty quickly after he's torn off the first few heads. Um, and we have two moves. It's sort of metaphorical, but uh, not really. Yeah. Um, so you know, hopefully, you will come away from this going, you know. The same way you do in the comics, where he started off as a rote villain, and you know he's his own thing. Yeah. I don't know where you go. I can't say he was wrong. <laughs> of the comics, when you guys were cracking the story, can you list any comics that you read that were oh jeez, almost all of them. I mean, that that um, uh, that teaser piece had some close-ups of the of this omnibus that we had sort of you know over over which one? over posted. Uh, well, I think no, it, which comic? Oh, it was like a, it's like it's an like where the, the giant thing. bound yeah. infinity gone. Yeah, but I mean, we've read every anything that had Thanos in it, anything that had the stones in it. Um, uh, a lot of Archie. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk about uh, how much of this is on Earth? How much of this is going to be cosmic? How are we going to? I mean, it, yeah, we can't give you a percentage, yeah. but it's it's yeah, yeah. it's fairly split. I mean, the, uh, that's part of the the nature of the of all these groups coming together. Um, 
So, you know, we also and we wanted to give it, not have it be the feeling, like it all comes down to earth every time. You know, it's this sort of earthist point of view that you know you have to tell a science fiction story in order to conquer the universe. I have this one little tiny planet, so like. The, we needed a broad canvas the whole time so that it didn't feel like coincidentally every single stone is on you know That's is right. in America they're still spread out um, you know Remember, one of our jobs is to, we're big structure guys, you know, so that if you go back and look at Winter Soldier and Civil War particularly, that they are, uh, whether you like the movies or not, they're pretty well structured, you know, and, and big choices have been made. So we had to do the same thing here, and yet we had six MacGuffins that can be relentless if you don't do this right, which means that every time you collect one, I don't mean to get into the screenwriting weeds, but like every time you collect one, it can't just be a check mark. It has to do something uh, characterful. It's got to move plot forward, but it also has to have stakes and cost for char literal characters at the time. Um, so it's not just a shopping spree. Uh, and I think we've done that. Um, and you'll, boy, we're going to wrench every bit of emotion out of each of those moments that we can. To get back to Thanos for a second, um, the MCU has got tons of critical praise, but one thing that the franchise tends to get dinged on is that like the villains are just not as impressive as yeah. they basically look the over. So, I, I'm not trying yeah, to be yeah, proud of you, yeah, but like, yeah. that's something you guys are aware of. So, we're oh, trying yeah. to create like the big bad of yeah. this franchise. Yeah. I'm curious, like, how you're navigating that. Well, part of it is motivation, where, you know, if you have a villain who just wants to kill somebody, just wants to take over the world because it seems like a fun thing to do, or has been paid by the Russians to take over the world run for president the world. <laughs> that guy is not very interesting he's pathetic but you know and you know we take this from Starlin is that you know Thanos is an amoral philosopher he's not a he's not the devil you know although he does sometimes have the devil standing next to him uh, and you know we wanted that all the way through to have a, a a villain with understandable motivations and emotions, like right. you know, Thanos has family. Thanos has two daughters that we know of. Thanos has, uh, I mean, he has eight million backstories in the comics, but they're all kind of sad, you know. I, this is what I'd point out. Sorry, yeah. is that the, my favorite two in the entire MCU, right, are Loki and uh, Kilgrave. Because he's creepy and awful, but really cares in a strange way. Like, and, and totally and, doesn't see himself as a villain. For sure. And screen time, right? A lot of screen time for, for both those characters, right? And, uh, and Chris is right. They both have sort of these weird family relationships, right? So Thanos will get the benefit of both those things. He's got daughters that he clearly has to deal with, and we and James did a nice job of setting the table for us, and so we are certainly going to uh, run with that. Uh, and screen time. Like, he's, he, it's not an origin story. Very often, again, in the screenwriting ways, you know, we're trying to get a character up and off the ground, and so the bad guy tends to be a foil for the development of the hero, and that's not the case here. If anything, it's the opposite. Our heroes are foils for the villain whose story we need to tell writ large. Hey, can you clarify what you were saying about the devil? Oh, I was just, uh, Mephisto. Mean, Right, that's what I mean. In the it's comics, the uh, I can neither confirm nor deny the existence of Mephisto. No, I just meant like, he's, you know, he's often seen in hell. He is, right. you know, but yeah. he's not the, you know, he's something more elemental or primal. Is, will these films kind of get into the, the more uh, weird otherworldly characters like the personification of death or is it more motivated by family uh, I mean you know it's cosmic and crazy yeah. but in a way that we we always try to ground stuff sure. right particularly in Winter Soldier and Civil War uh, you know we, we took stories that everyone was familiar with through Baker's run right and, mm -hmm. and Civil War Malar's run. 
Is it Millar or Miller? No, I, Miller. It's Miller. Yeah, because right. I never hear it out loud. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but to tell a different, make a different soup out of the ingredients, right? So we'll do something similar here because we owe it to the characters that these 18 movies were the characters, right? You talk about structure. So when you're structuring uh, this, are you structuring it as one huge movie or one movie pushed aside, second movie? Both. Boy, it's, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, they can't have a second one without the first one, right. but our but hope it, is that it's, yeah. it's breakfast and then lunch. It what does else? It does not feel like you hit pause and then unpaused it. It is two very different. Because yeah. there's movies that come up between, right? So they, they, yeah. they influence part four? Yes. By the way, another nightmare. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we saw something um, you know, earlier that, it, like, as we were just walking around, that implied that Captain Marvel will. Have. What did you see? Just a mailbox. She has 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 a mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> a very telling mailbox. Yeah. 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 I'm sure obviously that's very under wraps, but is there anything you can share about uh, my character's possible? Well, super excited to have her. Yeah. I mean, for one thing, she's, you know, that movie does not exist yet. So we're, we're you know, we're following up on something that's, is is good intentions at the moment, but uh, you know that's a. I mean, on one level, it's a power scale that right now doesn't exist in the MCU, um, and it's it's or she's I should say she's in a, in some ways the closest to Captain America, and which is a weird now rare kind of character which is sort of a person who's right and knows they're right doesn't really want to hear it when you tell them they're wrong <laughs> like so with all these flawed fucked up people and Quill who's you know a mess and Tony who's you know just a massive ego all contorted you know it's fun to get another person with a clear vision in there and go yeah. Maybe I this already, but um, how much of the Infinity Gauntlet story is going to be in this film? I can no longer keep track of which <laughs> thing that's Gauntlet called Infinity is troll? what. Is Gauntlet Pip the Troll? Yeah, he comes to Earth. He gets like reincarnated. Yeah, yeah, Captain Marvel gets yeah. there. There's a car accident. There's <laughs> new right. bodies. There's some new bodies. <laughs> yeah. All of it. It's yeah. all of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're so conversant in it. Uh, <laughs> It has elements of everything that had the word infinity in front of it. That's right. We, we, we steal know. all the things that are helpful to us, and we're not slavish to anything that, that doesn't Well, it's us. also because a lot of those things then, you know, then you get into things like characters we don't have the rights to. Yeah. Exactly. So, Silver Surfer's flying all over those things. It's like, ah, it'd be great right. to have. <laughs> <laughs> right. Unfortunately, he flew to, he flew to uh, uh, Century City and never came back. <laughs> and how do you guys approach introducing a, a major character to the MCU like uh, you did with Black Panther in Civil War before his movie, with Captain Marvel before her movie, uh, Pip yeah. the Troll before his movie? Twenty twenty two. Well, there's a lot of conversations, right? And I'm neither confirming or denying what you just supposed, neither on Pip the Troll or how Captain Marvel works. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, but we have had to juggle both Marvel, uh, uh, Black Panther, Ant Man and the Wasp, and Marvel specifically, as because they all exist in various ways in and around the. Uh, that's two movies. Thor 3. <laughs> Thor 3. Well, at least that's before this first movie. Right. right? So, like, that Panther is too. Um, uh, so it's really, we think we handled it and solved it in fairly clever ways, um, but uh, it certainly was an issue. Like, yeah. well, how, you know, if you want to do what you want to do here, how does it affect this movie and not just right. make this movie? Uh, yeah. Say, why is Ant Man and Wasp not uh, in uh, Infinity War Part Two? You know, so we got to work on that. Right. Out. Well, and also, like, how do you do it so that I think I think he's writing down that Ant Man and Wasp are Infinity. not in Infinity War Part Two. So you just said. That. No, no. How how is <laughs> how <laughs> how is that the story of that movie not just part two yeah. of this? How, how do you, is it? You know, how do you not? Like yeah. 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 How, do you, how do you not fall into the trap of what these right. movies are sometimes accused of, which is just feeding each other and not being standalone things? Right. You know, so you can't make them overly dependent on each other, and yet you still want to have right. this bloodstream flowing through the universe. Like we. 
Peyton Reed and his group of writers are going to make whatever movie they want. We had very small requests. <laughs> it would be great if right there that person was, is that okay, good, right? And so like we did not, there's, it, you always make the best movie you can, right? Same yeah. thing with uh, Black Panther and same thing with Marvel. It's, it's, they're going to make the movies they're going to make. And with, in this unique case, very small, tiny suggestions for beginnings and endings like that. Uh, well, matching the tones too. I mean, obviously, like the tones of Guardians, of those movies are yeah. so different than yeah. what we probably expect Black Panther to be versus what you know, yeah. Spider-Man. I mean, like all yeah. these are obviously on such different levels. How do you work with that? Well, I mean, sometimes, sometimes you play into it, which is you know, when you cut to the Guardians, it's a it's a breather. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you're you're going from T'Challa and Captain America being very intense. Kept to Quill and Drax, it's like, oh, you know, yeah. great. Doesn't mean they're not carrying as much plot, it just means the tone is different. But it's also fun to drag people into each other's yeah, tones. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 What would you Pull say, somebody into the Guardians and have them go, what the fuck is with you? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the tone of the movie, and like, what, what kind of type of movie? Is this a disaster movie? Or a uh, it's, it's, it is difficult to explain. Like, Oscar-worthy? <laughs> <laughs> Can we not have that conversation? <laughs> This is embargo, right? Okay, so Lord of the Rings, oh, big go. epic thing, right? It's three movies. This is 23 movies. When is someone going to get Feige the Thalberg Award? Like, he's, all he's doing is remaking Hollywood. Please. All right, sorry. Hide <laughs> <laughs> the voice guy. Just to follow up on that slightly, because the Oscars are kind of notoriously against the idea of the superhero genre. Yeah, uh, I'm curious what you guys think it'll take for a Marvel movie to actually get that attention. I don't know. I mean, people mumble about it with movies, with various movies for various reasons. Like, there's an article about Wonder Woman this this Monday, you know, and there's articles about Logan, you know, none of which none of which are us. Um, uh, I think it's got to, you know, someone has to come to Jesus, so to speak, and take a look at the amount of work that's been. Which is, you know, you can work very hard on a crappy movie. It's yeah, not just rewarding work. But no, like, but I mean, but like, Return of the King is no better or worse than the other two. It was a cum it got cumulative awards. I it, and frankly, if you go back and look at it, you're like, really, you gave that to Oscars? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you had extra two Oscars towers that year. Better, let's face it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there's one level where there does have to be a sort of like. Well, fuck. That's more, you know, that's a bigger achievement than anybody's ever pulled off on a on a multi movie scale. But also, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to remove the prejudice from the eyes of these people. <laughs> it's a civil rights drama, and we're the victims. <laughs> um, Star Wars was nominated for Best Picture. No, I mean, I think it's Raiders more. Than I think it's more than possible for someone with a clear with with no blinders on to go in and go, well, hell, that was a heavy lift, you right. know? And that movie kicked my ass all over the place. Yeah. Yes. Like, you know, it's like, what is it? Diving, you know, the yes. degree of difficulty. You know, <laughs> I think sometimes people are lucky. That movie was really simple and pure and should get an award, and that's great, you know? But also, you should also go, holy shit, that... That was, was a triple limb. Yeah, that was a crazy complicated <laughs> dive, and they did it, you know? Um... But the you know Oscars are not actually an accurate measure of anything. So, yeah. um, for Thanos, you guys called. Him the Did we wine world. enough there? Is that <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm tired <laughs> for, and the food. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for Thanos, you called him an amoral philosopher, and I'm curious because I don't think he's going to be literally talking to the devil, and mm. you don't need to confirm or deny that. But he's not going to be like spouting his philosophy out. Like, can you say anything about like? Who's like Thanos is like supporting cast? Like, how did you crack that? Oh, good. Trump good for you. That's a little structure. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, you needed to make sure that he wasn't just all by himself, and so um, uh, he. It also means that you didn't have the same scene over and over again as he went collecting stones and knock people around. So there's a you know that's how you get this sort of tapestry uh, film where he has emissaries who are doing some of his work um, while he is doing a lot of his own heavy lifting. Um, but he has my lot. Just to say, yes. lot order, yes. I don't know if I'm allowed to say about order. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I was. So. Uh, 
don't know if I oh, said he, it. He, <laughs> no, he and um, the end of uh, Ant Man or whatever said, "Fine, I'll do it myself." Uh, it's the end yeah. of Ultron. Ultron. Or Ultron. Ultron. Sorry. Not our movie. Yeah. <laughs> and we and we all sat there and went, "What the hell was he talking?" About? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where right. was he when he did that? That's right. <laughs> um, Is that canon? Is yeah. that, did he? I don't know. Is that the real guy? Yeah. Um. There's also the other gauntlet in Odin's, oh, uh... Another, another delightful, delightful problem. Odin's a bit of a showman. That's right, um, that's right. Uh, Thanos has lot. Thanos turns out to have quite a few people to talk to, both, yeah. both on his side and not on his side. Um, and... You know, weirdly, I think he's the most understandable guy in the movie sometimes. It's, it's sort of like... Does he even work in this movie? Because he seemed like he just oh, yeah. wants to, yes. to get, get a bunch yes. of stones. That's the other thing, sorry. Yeah. So one of the big challenges is how to make sure he's not just a relentless machine right. collecting mm -hmm. stones like he's at the, uh, going shopping. Um, so we want to give him a full, weighted, emotional story. Yeah. You can kind of say this is Thanos' origin story. So that he will get the weight of any of the previous heroes in terms of the decisions he has to make in order to get what he wants. I mean, a big thing about all of these, I mean, all of these movies, but these two, you know, all the way along the line, we wanted to give people have, have give people choices and make them continue to have to sacrifice this decision for this decision and not have it be just, you know, I have no choice in this. Matter. Like, aliens attack New York City. What are you going to do? Not fight them? You know, you know, you have to fight them. So, not not criticizing that, but but just in order to sustain this long of a of a of an epic, to keep the waters a little muddy, to keep them going. Like, interesting, he did that. I might not have done that. And to do that for everybody, heroes and villains alike. Um, until you get to the end and you go, huh, shouldn't have done it. Last see, question, guys. We see a bunch of the Avengers here, but there's oh. no uh, Iron Man, Thor, or Hawkeye. Can you talk about their roles? It's, uh, as I said earlier, it's Nashville, so everyone is in a different uh, bubble, oh, and some bubbles come together and break apart. Some bu bubbles come together for the third act, that kind of stuff. Sure. So, again, everyone's scattered. Other people are utterly CG, so what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes. Oh, he's in the scene. Oh, sure. He just does. <laughs> <laughs> Ant-Man's all over that scene. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And that concludes today's edition of Slash Film Daily. You can find this entire interview in text form on SlashFilm.com. I will link it in the show notes. Slash Film Daily is published every weekday, bringing you the most exciting news from the worlds of movies and television, as well as deeper dives into the great features from SlashFilm.com, like this on-set interview. You can subscribe to Slash Film Daily on iTunes, Google Play, Overcast, Spotify, all the popular podcast apps. Please feel free to send us your feedback, questions, comments, concerns to Peter at SlashFilm.com. Please go rate and read this podcast on iTunes. Tell your friends, spread the word, and we'll see you tomorrow.